So just driving through, um, came upon a town called Harmony, Minnesota. Driving through town, look at the size of this church that I found. And beautiful. This town has a population of 900. This is a tiny little town, southeast Minnesota. There's not a whole lot around. And look at that building. This beautiful brick building built in 1866. The craftsmanship that went into that, it's amazing. We're gonna leave the bike in the truck because it's still raining out, um, but I'm just gonna go for a little walk. We'll see, I just got a feeling about this town. I don't know, we'll see. So I was totally right about the town. It's definitely a tourist town. I came in the backside, so I didn't realize this was all here. But the town just had that feel. It's weird how you can feel that out. But yeah, this is definitely gonna be a small little tourist town. So this little town, definitely worth coming to. I've never heard of it before. It's kind of like that Stillwater, Taylor's Falls kind of town, but it's even smaller. So it's not quite as crowded. Talk to some of the locals, all oh, really nice people as well. Very cool. Look at that cool old car. That's probably what I was getting a feeling for. That car, it was calling my name. Because oddly enough, we just parked right around the corner. Well, the skies are showing some blue up there. We might get lucky and try out today. Well, I was driving and it's time to go out and stretch legs. Big weird orange ball up in the sky. I have no idea what it is. But I saw a covered bridge over here. Thought, that looks cool. Should probably go check that out. I would love to tell you what town I'm in, but I have no clue. I was driving through town on my way in Wisconsin, saw a park, and in the park, there was this really cool covered bridge. There's some signs up on town that say, visit Minnesota's only covered bridge. So I thought, let's do exactly that. This thing is built hurricane proof. It's like really, really overbuilt. But what do I know about building a covered bridge? Just seems like there's a lot of lumber in this thing. This bridge was originally constructed on the Zombroda River in 1869, cost about $5,800. Original site was on Highway 58, about a thousand feet from the present location. It's 120 feet long. It's a lattice truss design, plans by A.J. Thatcher, constructed and supervised by E.L. Kingsbury. So I guess we're in Zombroda. From here, we're gonna be going to Wisconsin. There's some state forest land with a boat landing that has some camping spots on it. It's up on the St. Croix River. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Hopefully, won't be anybody there.
seem to escape this rain. But that's okay because rain can provide us with an opportunity to check for leaks on our camper. We're going to start in the overhead cab because truck campers and Class C's are notorious for leaking up the overhead. What I do is get down inside, go all the way to the back corner, see if you can feel any moisture in there. It's really important to get in and check around all of the corners, the sides, check the wall, make sure you don't feel any dampness whatsoever. And you wanna make sure you check both sides. This storage compartment in the overhead, I have had leaks on this side before. What I've done was, is I drilled a hole in here so I could get in and fill this whole area with resin. So I always make sure that nothing has started again. Another place I've had to do work, is in the corner cabinet. You can see, I took this whole wall out inside and replaced it. So again, we're just gonna check the floor, make sure that nothing's damp or wet. Once you're done checking the corners, last thing I suggest, lift up your bed, feel underneath it. Make sure it's not wet under there. Fowler, he's one of my favorites. If you guys don't watch him, you should check it out. He's good. Most leaks in the truck campers and class C's come from the overhead cab. It's normally where they start leaking. And the culprit usually is those cab markers up top. I've had to do some extensive repairs to this unit. When I bought this truck camper four or five years ago, I paid six grand for it. It did need some work. Six grand for an Arctic Fox though was a great deal. And when I bought it, it didn't show signs of delamination. But after owning it for one year, it started to ripple. So I had to take the whole front cap off. But back then, the idea of being YouTube wasn't even in my head, so I never videotaped any of it. The other place where I've had some issues is on the side. Right in this area here, you're gonna notice some delamination. Now, I attempted to fix that when I was in there. When I had this whole front cap pulled off, put resin back there, fixed it, did just like they show on YouTube. The problem I had, it didn't seat down perfectly, so it's good and dry and hard back there, but I'm left with permanent ripples. So I was actually thinking about making a diamond plate cover on the front. I think that would look really cool. This whole front end piece though, it's been all replaced with aluminum. Then I used rain gutter to hide the, the lap. Next place you're gonna to wanna to check, underneath your slide. Everything underneath here should be nice and dry. So just make sure you feel all the way around, all this wood on the corner, you don't wanna have any wetness anywhere. And look, all the way underneath, it's been raining in sheets all night long. So we don't want to see any drips or any water on this inside edge anywhere. Everything looks good and dry. As far as products, there's a million of them out there. I like Dicor products and Cicaflex. Those are the two main ones I use. You guys do your own research because there's a million ways to do it. So right now we're in the Governor Knowles State Forest, really close to the St. Croix River, kind of straight across from Rush City in Minnesota. I'm hoping that I can get to a place where no one's at. I'm seeing quite a few pull-offs in the area, so we always got some boondocking. There's nothing right on the river. Check out what I found. A little cemetery in the middle of nowhere. They got some really old stones here. American Legion, Alfred Burns. Unfortunately, I can't make out the name, but I can see that the person was born March 22nd, 1849, passed away October 26th, 1913. What a peaceful place to be laid to rest. Let's go find Let's rust the campground. Son of a... So what I've learned right here, rain, I don't scare Wisconsin people away from campgrounds. But don't worry, I saw a couple of pull-offs. We'll get there. So you may be asking yourself, Jesus, where is he going? I've been using this Onyx map. I can see that I'm gonna be turning into county forest land and also the uh, 
George Knoll State Forest. Let's go check this out. Oh, she's tight. You know, and being tight's not that bad. It's the overhead clearance that I gotta be careful for. Oh, great, speaking. I've talked about before on this channel of having a van. This would be one of the big advantages to having a van. I would plow right through this, no problem. One thing I've had to do to the roof of that uh, camper is along the edges because I've been down trails like this so many times. I've had to take a turnabond tape, put it down the edge of my roof because the rubber roof is actually torn in a few places. Maybe I can make a video of that for you guys. We'll go find another pull off somewhere. I always seem to find a spot. I never have problems with that. We got another one. Let's see where this one takes us. This one looks like it's just going to stop right here. In Minnesota, in the Superior National Forest, a lot of the pull-offs that we have up there are for the deer hunting season. Hunters use them. Speaking of deer, it's thick up here. And I saw that there is some forestry campgrounds around here, but it's a Saturday night, and I would almost bet that they're full. We're at about 6.30 right now, so I'm still feeling good about finding a place. Fingers crossed on this one. Why would they block it off? This is, that's too bad. And the answer to the question of why do they have to block stuff off? The answer. Prime spot right here. This would have been the perfect boondocking spot. That culvert is, is there for a reason though. They don't want people back here probably been trashed too much in the past made it to the end of the dead end someone has found themselves a nice little spot and I'm not about to uh, park down here on this dead end with them I don't like it when people do that to me so I'm gonna go find my own spot I think it might be best to walk it a little ways I have no idea what I'm looking for but this place it isn't it. It's usually a feeling. You'll know when you get there. Uh, it'll be a place where you'll say, oh, I want to wake up here in the morning. This place, this isn't it. If there was just an open area where you could set up camp, then I would say perfect. Well, we'll see if like the fifth or sixth time's a charm. This one looks like it opens up on the map a little bit. Hopefully it just doesn't turn into a swamp. You know, it just dead ends right here. I think what would be good is if I pull the truck in, have the truck facing out, and this is where we're gonna stay tonight. This is really a beautiful spot. I like this one things about as level as it gets at campgrounds yeah this is gonna do perfect if you guys watched last week's video you see that I stayed at a city park one night and then at a uh, state campground the next so this is a nice way to kind of cleanse my palate this is the way I prefer to camp this is just like this out here in the middle of nowhere I this is where I feel the most at peace I guess so yeah we'll see you guys in the morning Last night was so peaceful here. This was an absolutely beautiful spot. I'm really glad that I came here. Glad I found this place. While out on my walk this morning, ran into another guy who's doing some scouting around for archery season. That opens up here in another couple of weeks. Like I thought earlier, these roads and little spots are used by a lot of hunters in the area. So far, the two guys that I ran into, super cool, really nice.
you just really can't go wrong with these truck campers. Honestly, inside that truck feels like a four-star hotel room out here in the middle of the woods. This is what recharges my batteries. I saw so many deer. I heard grouse this morning. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see a bear. That would have been cool. Yeah, this was nice. Really glad I came here. Well, I checked the map. Looks like I got a couple hour drive to get home. So I think I'm gonna end this video right here. If you guys stuck around this whole time, I wanna thank you. Now I'm gonna end it, but be kind, be honest. We'll see you down the road.